all my life I've been consumed by the idea of getting, getting closer. How can I get closer to the past, which moves so always farther and farther away? Leo Slezak made a recording in the mid-20s. It's one of these late leader recordings that Slezak made that are unbelievably intimate. It always feels like you're a tiny child and he's your grandfather sitting on the edge of your bed, singing right into your ear. be singing right into the microphone, the newly invented microphone, because you can hear each breath becoming a note, struggling to become a note. And sometimes he doesn't even quite make the note, uh, but then the, the note forms and then it dies away and then he breathes in and makes the next note. It's the closest thing I can possibly imagine to having someone singing right into your ear. I had the experience once um, of being on an airplane, sitting next to a, 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 a famous Mexican folk singer. And it, since the airplane was so noisy, this wonderful singer sang a whole concert of folk songs into my ear, like half an inch away. And that was the most incredible experience. And that's exactly how I feel when I listen to Slezak. I feel like he's singing half an inch away from my ear. I just love the way they sound. I think that the sound, you feel it a lot more just in a physical sense than other types of media because you can actually feel the sound pushing out of the bell of the phonograph. It's just a more visceral experience, even if it's just, um, you know, from the kind of tinny sound of the horn uh, to the crackling of the record, the 
whirring and the pops that happen on the record, like the the surface noise, basically, or how a voice can sound very far away if it's an older record and a lot of the information has been carved off. Record collectors, I think, generally have a personality trait that they like to be able to relive the experience. Some people have personalities where they always want a new experience, but I think record collectors tend to want to relive it. There's a certain naturalness in some of the old recordings that I really enjoy. I, uh, in those days, you couldn't fix things. If you missed a note or something went wrong, you either had to make the record over or issue it with the mistake. So they give a much more realistic view of what the performer actually performed. Cylinder phonograph started out as a dictating machine where the boss would record a letter on a wax cylinder and then the secretary would listen through ear tubes and uh, type the content and then the cylinder could be shaved down. But when they started making phonographs for the home, they still had the record head you could buy so you could cut your own wax cylinders. The cylinders only play a little over two minutes and you have to, to record, you have to group the musicians just as close as you possibly can near the recording horn. You use a big horn to concentrate the sound. vibrate and the recording stylus was attached to that. It's nowhere near the fidelity we have nowadays, but it was all they had 120 years ago. Well, the wax cylinders are fragile, not only physically in terms of breakage, even worse, they're easily afflicted by mold and it eats into the wax, totally effacing and erasing, you might say, the uh, recorded signal. Seventy-eight RPM records are actually fairly durable. A recording from 1905, a 78 pressed in 1905, if it's not worn out, probably retains its original quality now. 
Now, the original quality initially was not high because recording techniques were so primitive. But in terms of preservation, Demonstrating the records in the way that I do in this kind of DJ format, it's actually really frowned upon by a lot of traditional phonograph collectors because what I'm doing is actually destroying the equipment every time I'm using them. I kind of have no reverence for the records themselves. I just think of it more as a performance and the more that I can play the phonograph for more people, the more people get to hear the phonograph. A lot of people have made the comment that they've only ever seen a phonograph in a museum. They've never heard one played. So I think that's really important to demonstrate that to people and actually use it. The records that I'm playing are played with a steel needle and the records when they were made were planned obsolescence. You're only meant to get about 200 to 250 plays out of the record. Then all the information is mostly scratched off of it and then you go back to the store and buy more records. So every time I'm out there playing it is kind of a uh, performance piece in a way of this might be the last time that we hear this particular song. And when the record is done, if you look at the tip of the needle, you can actually see a little bit of the, the record that it has deposited on the tip of the needle. Oh, I have had traumatic experiences. When a favorite record of mine got lost and uh, it got shuffled around or during a move or during, uh, during uh, renovations and, and, uh, and I'd just about given it up. I thought, oh no, when will I ever find them, my favorite record? And then suddenly by chance it reappears and it's like, kill the fatted calf! And I call people up and say, you've got to come over and, 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 and hear Leo Slezak's Nacht und Time, I found it again, hallelujah. Uh, because you just you just get so attached to to those those voices and those those, those performances, uh, their 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 love, their their life, and their connection. You can't imagine living without them. I mean, I guess if you broke them, you could get another copy somewhere. But um, but I just hate to imagine having to do that. I know that, like the owner of, uh, of, a, of a great painting or sculpture, I am just a, a caretaker of these objects for the next generation. I try to use cactus needles or bamboo needles whenever possible. You just feel a sense of responsibility to take care of these things because they're not making any more of them. And they are precious. I grew up listening to 33 RPM records and then moved into the CD era. So we went from, my generation went from listening to records that played about 25 minutes to CDs that played about 60 minutes. And now we have MP3s that can play basically until the end of time. And 
But there's something that we lose with that experience. And that I rediscovered when I began seriously listening to 78 RPM records, which are, which are three or four minutes long tops. It's the experience of really listening. Because when I would, whenever I put on a, a 33 RPM record, my attention wanders. I can't listen to anything for 20 minutes um, without my attention wandering. I can't stay focused on anything that long. But for four minutes, I can focus and get into the music and go deeper and deeper into it and be completely in the moment. Four minutes of being as in the moment as I ever am in this lifetime. There's a strange reaction that happens sometimes when, when I play a record for people, people who really love music and, uh, and really appreciate it. People will stand in front of the horn and they'll listen and they'll listen. They'll listen in silence, you know, staring into the sound. 
and they'll wait and they'll wait. And then something will hit them. A sound will come and people will just burst into laughter. And it's nothing funny. It's just sound. You know, a fortissimo will come out and people will burst into laughter because it's so real. It knocks them off their feet. It's almost like, like an epiphany of joy. And I've seen this again and again, you know, people listening to a symphony and they burst into laughter. They're listening with the greatest possible gravity and seriousness, but something moves them to laughter. Through the dale, treading the wine. 